as you grow your practice, one of the things that you'll need are some good systems in place that will help you in automating your practice and making sure everything runs smoothly. Therapy Notes is the number one provider of electronic health record systems for mental health providers. Therapy Notes has everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. So go check them out today, therapynotes.com. And if you use the coupon code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, you can get your first two months free. So check them out today, therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 132 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer. Glad you've joined us for the podcast. If this is your first time listening in, welcome. Glad you found us. Glad you're um, um, with me on this journey. And for those of you that are coming back for more, um, glad you're back. And I hope uh, whenever wherever you might be listening to it, you'll take time to subscribe to the podcast. So this this particular episode, as you probably saw from the title, is uh, is a different episode. Um, and quite frankly, over this past week, I've kind of agonized a little bit over whether I should do this episode, but really what I've landed on and really where my heart and my convictions are is that I felt like I needed to address just racism. Um, you know, there are so many, so many things out there, so many good resources out there, um, and there are people that can give voice to this in a much better way than I can, but I just felt like this would be my way in a small way to really kind of give voice, and you'll hear me say that over and over again in this episode, is to um, to speak up, particularly as a white male, a white southern male, about this particular issue. Um, this, was a hard, this was a hard episode for me to do, and I've just been filled with a lot of emotion while trying to do it. Not that I'm saying that to get any any sort of comfort from anybody or people to to have any sort of sympathy for me because, uh, you know, my feelings are my feelings. Um, and I also recognize that with the audience, for those of you that are listening, a lot of this stuff you know, most of us in graduate school have had um, some training and so social and cultural and justice issues. So we're, we're aware of these things. But I guess in, in, in a way, this, this episode is my attempt, and maybe I would say, go out on a limb and say, my feeble attempt at to, as to give, give voice and use the privilege of this platform to, to speak out against some things that I think need to be spoken to. I've put together a resource page um, on the website, and you can get to that at practiceoftherapy.com slash racism resources. And um, it's something I hope to continue to add to. I've also put together a PDF that you can download from that from that particular page um, uh, for you to use just as a, as a reference point. Because I think um, through this season that we're in with the death and murder of George Floyd, which there are so many other names, um, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, just to name a few. Um, there's been so many. And um, anyway, in this episode, I just want to give voice to all of this uh, in, in a way that hopefully is helpful to people and also just in a way that hopefully gives you some things to think about. And I will say that in this episode, I do get a little political or maybe a lot political, which, as I say and point out in this episode, it's it's something that it's a political issue. And I don't think that we can overlook that. Um, my intent with this episode is not to offend anyone in any way. 
uh, I, I realize that I might step on some toes here, but uh, um, in one way, I want to say I'm sorry for that. But in another way, I, I'm going to say, OK, that's me giving voice. And I think we have to hear each other and um, listen, listen to one another. So without further ado, here are my thoughts on racism, fear and how we can care. Folks, this is a different episode. This is a hard episode. And I think it's hard for a number of reasons. Number one is that um, it's maybe a little different tone than I normally take with the podcast. Um, There's a great deal of sadness with this podcast to some degree. Um, But I felt that it um, it was really time and probably long, long overdue that I no longer keep silent about the issues going on around us, issues related to racism and bigotry and just white privilege in our country. This past week, these past few weeks, um, particularly with the murder of, of George Floyd and the outpouring of people demonstrating people trying to make their voices be heard. Um, has, I hope, has made a tremendous impact on on a number of us. And one of the things that I know that I've, 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 I've kind of made a pledge not only to myself, but only uh, also to others, just out of a, a deep conviction to want to help others, to want to end injustice, to want to do something, was for me as a white male, a white Southern male, uh, to no longer be silent and no longer kind of turn my head the other way. I don't know that I necessarily have done that intentionally, but I have done it out of ignorance, done it out of um, um, just not knowing. And this week, after hearing many, many voices, I've just kind of inundated myself with with reading more, with listening to podcasts, listening to the pain of people talking about times that they have been hurt, particularly black and brown people being hurt by things that white people say, you know, those dumb things that white people say. I felt like it was just time for me to try to give voice and try to turn the ship, if you will. I don't generally like to be political, um, but this is a topic that you have to get political about to some degree. And I know there will be some people out there that will not agree with me. It's okay. I'm not requiring you to re- agree with me. And I'm not necessarily requiring people to necessarily see it the way I see it. But I think we have to speak truth to what is going on around us. And it's not just as I said, it's happening now. It's been happening for centuries It's been happening over the course of history. And I think where we are now is really the time for us to begin to really do what we need to do to change things. Unfortunately, I am not an expert on what we need to do. I'm not an expert on racism. I'm still a learner and learning it all and learning about how my own prejudice has has affected me along the way, how my own turning a blind eye um, has has affected other people, maybe maybe not directly, but indirectly. You know, one of the things that we have to be aware of is, is white people. And I'm just going to speak pretty, pretty bluntly here, and maybe, maybe I might, what I say might be a little offensive to folks, but who cares? Um, as white people, we do not know what it's like to go into a place and be automatically, um, self-conscious, um, to walk into a new place and be surrounded by other white people and the discomfort that we feel, that they feel. 
We don't know that. We've never experienced that. I've never experienced that. But I have seen it happen. And I think the mistakes that I've made in the past is is that I didn't do enough to reach out to maybe a brown or black person that was in that situation to try to help make make them feel comfort comforted or feel comfortable. And so I think that's one thing that we can do as caregivers is to let people know that we are safe. We are a safe person and that we are a person that maybe has a little more power at this point to be able to speak out against other people's um, injustices, uh, other people's uh, prejudice, other people's racism. Um, I, I just feel that it is time for us to be able to give voice to that, to speak out. And I think the one way in which we can speak out maybe the loudest, is at the ballot box. Again, I don't like being political on this podcast. It's not why it's here. It's here to provide resources and help to people. And so I want to give you some, hopefully some ideas and the resources I want to share here in a bit um, of really kind of understanding racism. But one of the things that I will say, and this is political, and I know it's political, is that the rhetoric and the talk that we've heard from our political leaders over the last three to four years has got to stop. It is doing nothing but creating more divide in our country. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're Libertarian. Whatever you are, the rhetoric has got to stop. I'm a believer in free speech, but we also have to do that responsibly and understand that words do matter and that words do count. And so we've got to end that. We've got to stop this hate rhetoric and um, all of that. And I think you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this. I think the other thing that we have an opportunity for in our professions is to use what we know, our knowledge about psychology, about emotions, about how we are as human beings behaviorally, to teach people emotional intelligence. Because all of this, all of racism is rooted in fear. It's fear of someone that might look different than us, that might speak different from us, that might be somehow or another different on the surface. But there is no they or them. It's all of us. And so we've got to get away from separating ourselves out based on economic status, based on what we look like, how we speak, the cultures we come from, and um, get away from that. That is that is the old truth that is just going to have to change. As I said maybe a little bit earlier, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not one that um, um, can really say too much other than just my own life experiences. And I think when I became most aware of racism was when I was a kid. And I can remember as a kid in junior high school and us being all on a bus together. And this is in, this is in, um, I grew up in Cary, North Carolina, outside of Raleigh. And I was on the track team and we were going to a um, track meet in Selma, North Carolina. And um, I remember driving on the bus and going into Selma, North Carolina. And this would have been probably in the, um, in the 1970s, I'm giving my age away here, but there was a big billboard there that said the KKK welcomes you to Selma, North Carolina. And I remember noticing my black friends that were on the bus with us on the track team, the look on their faces when they realized what that sign said. And 
the thing that I recognized now that um, I wish I had known, I don't know if I could have known as a, as a, you know, junior high school kid was that was something where we needed to provide comfort. The white kids needed to provide comfort for the black and brown kids because they were afraid. And we needed to make sure they knew that we were behind them, that we had their backs, and that we were not going to let any harm come to them. And I'm reminded of that story because that's what I see happening in our world now, and that we're finally speaking up against it. And we need to understand and we need to somehow or another get across that we have got to have each other's backs. And particularly folks that are discriminated against, that are treated differently, and we needed to step up and not let it happen anymore. Um, sorry for my ramblings here, but it's just been on my heart and mind all week. And I felt like I needed to just give it a voice. So some resources to think about. First of all, I've put together a PDF sheet that I'll share with you uh, of just some resources that I went through and found that really kind of spoke to me. Um, Some of them you might already have, uh, but I've got a PDF sheet and in the in the show notes here, you'll find a link to where uh, you can sign up and download that. Um, I'll um, I'll put a uh, let's create. I'm going to create this URL right now here on the fly. But if you'll just go to practiceoftherapy.com/slash/racism/resources, um, that's where you can get uh, the copy of the PDF that I put together. Uh, of just ways for us to educate ourselves and learn more about racism and how to respond. And I'll say this, I'm not, I'm not even sure I'm responding in the right way or what I'm saying is, is going to be helpful at all, but I just knew I couldn't be silent any, anymore about this. One of the things that we can do as well with our clients, particularly our, our clients that are people of color is I think we need to be going above and beyond to reach out to them just to say, listen, I'm here. I know that this has got to be affecting you. And I just want to let you know that I'm aware of that. Um, also for us white folk, and this is something that I've, I've had to, um, to be more and more aware of. And I'll, hopefully what I'm about to say will make sense is that um, I'm feeling a lot of um, grief and guilt around this as a white person. I'm not saying that because I want somebody to uh, give me some sort of absolution about that. But one of the things I'll say to my other white friends here, um, be very, very aware of not trying to reach out to your black friends and your brown friends to to fix that for you or give you some sort of absolution over that. Um, I'm thinking that that is not a way to approach this. But I think just simply being there for people. I've shared with folks before on the podcast that one of my, one of the other hats that I wear is um, um, I'm an Episcopal clergy person. I'm a deacon in the Episcopal church. And so I like to say I wear a funny collar sometimes. But one of the things I've learned about being with people, and this not only carries over in my ministry work, but also into the therapy room, is just the just the the importance of the ministry of presence, uh, of just being present with people and standing with them. And um, so with our black and brown friends, um, and, and even the way I'm saying this now, it just doesn't come out right in that it's almost like I'm separating myself from from those people that um, and I don't intend for it to be that way. So I apologize for that. But but just being able to reach out to people, let me just say that. Let me just say, let me let's do a better job of reaching out to each other 
and understanding how racism is affecting those around us. And it's all affecting us in different ways. But I just want you to be aware of that. So I've got this resources PDF I put together. Again, the, the URL is practiceoftherapy.com slash uh, racism resources. Um, I invite you to download that. Um, and um, if you find out other resources that you want me to know know about, let them know, send them to me, and I'll make sure that the folks on my email list get those and that we, I try to do a good job of getting those resources out there. But um, anyway, folks, this is a little bit shorter episode, but I just felt like I needed to give voice to some things. So I ho- hope that we can continue the conversation either online or feel free to reach out to me by email. Um, you can always reach me at Gordon at practice of Uh, and I'd love to hear from you and love to hear your thoughts on just, um, how you're, how you're dealing with, uh, with all of this, particularly, um, my friends that are people of color. Uh, I, I want to hear from you. I want to, I want to know, know your story. I want to know what it's like. Um, even though I probably can never, ever experience it in the way that you have experienced things in your life. But um, this is my call for us to come together. This is my call and my way of giving, as I've said over and over again, giving voice to something that's been silent too long. And um, I do hope um, that you find peace and comfort among one another. Uh, I've just seen so many, so many stories of unity and solidarity and um, let's keep that movement going. Let's keep it going because it matters. Um, We all matter and um, we just need to do a better job of speaking truth, of being able to reach out where we need to reach out and really truly help one another. Uh, through this through this time, through all that we're going through here on the um, in the middle of a pandemic, which has frightened us all, um, and that's one other thing that occurred to me today. Day before I end is that I think maybe if there's a silver lining to the pandemic that we've gone through, the COVID uh, nineteen pandemic, even though it's this is really comparing apples to oranges because it's one thing to be afraid of another person uh, rather than to be afraid of something like a virus that affects us all um, and has disproportionately affected uh, black and brown communities even more is that we all know what it likes to feel fear. And maybe the silver lining um, in all of this is that we all have experienced fear through this. And so it makes understanding the fear of others much more relatable. We can we can have more empathy for others through this. So take care, folks. Um, again, check out the resources I've put together. I'm just going to create a web page that will have all of that on there. And um, plus the download, the PDF that you can download from that page. And would love hearing from you about resources that uh, you might know of that I maybe haven't included. Uh, certainly, there's uh, uh, there there's so much out there that I I realize I I don't know. And um, so, take care, folks. Love one another. Show compassion to one another. And we'll carry on, and we'll turn this ship and do our best to end racism together. Folks, thanks again for listening in to this special episode of the podcast. Um, I hope that wherever you're listening or however you're listening, you're hopefully maybe feeling a sense of resolve or a sense of purpose uh, just in your life in general. I think uh, across, you know, not only dealing with this particular issue of racism and uh, the 
the pandemic that we've been going through, but um, also just in your lives and in your practices with your families. Uh, I really hope that everyone is um, in a place where they feel safe, where they feel uh, a sense of peace and, and comfort um, in one form or fashion. So anyway, again, thank you for listening in to this episode and uh, listening to uh, my thoughts on, on this whole issue that we're facing right now or that we have been facing for years. As I said earlier, this is not a new issue, but I think uh, now is the time more than ever to give, give it, um, give it voice. So be sure and check out the sponsor for today's podcast therapynotes.com. They are the number one electronic health record system for mental health providers, and they're who I use in my practice. And um, they are really the hub of my practice uh, in many ways. Um, So check them out. And you can use the coupon code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can get two months of their services for free. Um, And also be sure and check out the other resources that I have on the website at practiceoftherapy.com. If you go up there to the top uh, where it says cool resources, you can uh, find a lot of other stuff that I've got out there, particularly related to the business side of private practice and uh, teach giving you some tools and resources for knowing how to manage that whole side of things. And and be sure and check out the resources page that I've put together uh, just on, on racism. And that is, pra- again, is practiceoftherapy.com slash racism resources. And, and feel free to look da- download the free download, the PDF I put together um, on on some racism resources that you can take a look at. So folks, take care. I hope you have a great rest of your week and weekend whenever you might be listening to this. And thanks again for being uh, with me on this journey. Take care. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.